Hello everybody, welcome to the third video in our series on Ramsey theory. Today I'd like to discuss Ramsey numbers. Now by the end of our first video, we've established that R33 is less than or equal to 6. Now right off the bat, you might uh, notice that we've introduced some uh, brand new notation here. Now what does it mean to say R33 is less than or equal to 6? So we have our uh, definition. Um, when we say that RST is equal to n, what that says is um, it's giving us the minimum n such that any, any two coloring on kn must have either a complete subgraph ks whose edges are monochromatic in color 1 or a complete subgraph kt whose edges are monochromatic in color 2. So when we say that r33 is less than or equal to 6, that means that there exists a minimum n that's at most 6, such that any two coloring on those n vertices, you know, the complete graph on those n vertices, will have a monochromatic K3 in either color, or in other words, a monochromatic triangle in either color. Now, to show that R33, you know, uh, is actually equal to 6, to show that 6 is actually the minimum number of vertices required, it's sufficient to show that on K5, you know, a complete graph on five vertices, there exists a two coloring where this, where, where this property fails. And so right now I want to I uh, kind of uh, focus in on K5. Uh, so we have a um, complete graph on five vertices. And I'm just going to uh, produce the following two coloring. Okay, now by inspection, this two coloring on K5, there's, there's not any, uh, between any three vertices, you can see that there's not um, a monochromatic triangle. There's not a monochromatic uh, a subgraph on three vertices. And so on K5, this property holds. So there's no way five can actually be the minimum N such that any two coloring has these properties. And so we, uh, we've actually shown that R33 is, in fact, equal to 6. So at this point, we've established the existence of a single Ramsey number, R33. In general, if we have, you know, RST, um, how do we know that RST actually produces a, fi a, finite, um, a finite result? How do we know that um, there will actually be a minimum number of vertices such that, um, this property holds. At this point, we make the claim, which is uh, known as Ramsey's theorem, that RST is finite. This is just some informal notation saying that RST is finite for all S and T in the natural numbers, uh, provided that S and T are greater than or equal to 2. Okay, to prove this theorem, we want to proceed by induction on uh, S plus T. Now our base case is uh, when s plus t is equal to 4. And so, uh, and so what that is, we're looking at r2, 2, and we claim that r2, 2 is equal to 2. Okay, so what this is saying is given a, uh, you know, 2 is the minimum number of vertices such that on the complete graph, you know, k2, any, uh, any two coloring on this graph is going to have a monochromatic subgraph of size 2 in either red or blue. Okay, so in K2, we have two vertices. Now we can call, and, and an edge exists between these two vertices, and it can be colored either red or blue. Now if it's colored red, we're finished, because here we have a red monochromatic subgraph of size 2, that satisfies this, this first property. Now, say we colored this edge blue instead. Well, again, we're finished. This satisfies the second property. And so, uh, 2 has to be the minimum number of vertices such that this property holds, because an edge coloring simply doesn't make sense on a single vertex. 
Okay, so now that we've established our base case, uh, we make the induction hypothesis, which states that our st is finite, so long as uh, s plus t is equal to n minus 1. Now we want to show that our st is also finite when the sum of s and t is equal to just n. So, um, so for our induction step, we want to show that our st is, it, well, it, it will be sufficient to show that our st is less than or equal to r s minus 1 t plus r s t minus 1. Uh, and this and this is going to and this is going to be when s plus t is equal to n. Now, why is it sufficient to show uh, this inequality? Well, uh, by our induction hypothesis, this is finite because s minus one plus t is equal to n minus one, and that's finite by our induction hypothesis. Similarly, r s t minus one. This is also finite by our, by our induction hypothesis. So we're summing two finite numbers, and we're claiming that our st is less than or equal to the sum of two finite numbers. So if we can show this inequality, we therefore show that our st is finite as well. OK, so we want to keep this inequality in mind. And uh, we're going to define capital N as being the sum of these two numbers, r s minus 1 t and r s t minus 1. And what we want to do is actually consider the complete subgraph, or rather the complete graph on capital N vertices. OK, so what we can do at this point is kind of imagine these N vertices arranged cyclically. So we have something like this. What we want to do is focus on one of those vertices, uh, on a single vertex. So let's choose, let's choose to focus in on this vertex and call it uh, little v. So we have vertex little v, and there's going to be uh, an edge from v to uh, the n minus 1 other vertices. Now we don't know a whole lot about these edges, but what we do know is that some of these edges are going to be blue, And some of these edges are going to be red in no particular order. This is just an arbitrary two coloring on Kn. Okay, so at this point, I'd like to define two different sets. I'd like set A to be the set of vertices adjacent to V uh, via a red edge. Alternately, I'd like, the, I'd like set B to be the set of vertices adjacent to, B, uh, to V via a blue edge. Now, it's important to note that the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B is going to be equal to uh, this, this whole thing is N. So remember, this whole thing is capital N. And then minus 1 because we've excluded our vertex that we're focusing in on, uh, little v. Okay, so given this, um, we make the claim that one of the following holds. Case one is that the cardinality of A is greater than or equal to um, R S minus 1 T. Okay, this is one possibility. The second possibility is that the cardinality of B is greater than or equal to R S T minus 1. Okay, so we make the claim that either this holds or this holds. Now to show this, uh, simply imagine that, these, that this cardinality was less than this, and this cardinality was less than this. Well then that means that, that means that our cardinality of A is less than this, and our cardinality of B is less than this. And then when we actually sum the two cardinalities, we get a number that's less than, than that, that's less than this whole thing, and that's no good. Therefore, we can conclude that one of these properties must hold. Now, without loss of generality, for the sake of this proof, I'm going to assume that case one holds, that the cardinality of A is greater than or equal to this. 
um, it would be an identical argument if we had chose, chosen case two. So let's focus in on case one. Um, so we have this set of, uh, we have set A, and uh, we don't know a whole lot about uh, set A. We have our vertex that we focus, focused in on V up here. We don't know a whole lot about set A, but because we're focusing in, you know, this is all, this is all within K capital N, so this is a small section of K capital N, because it's a complete graph, what we do know about these vertices is that there, an edge exists between every possible pair of these vertices in, so this is, these are vert, vertices in set A. We know an edge exists between every possible pair, and we also know that those edges are two-colored. So some of these edges are blue, some of these edges are red. Now, it's also important to remember that the cardinality of A is greater than or equal to R S minus 1 T. Okay, this is important. And why is this important? That means that if we can consider if we consider the subgraph on these A vertices, if we consider that subgraph, remember it's two colored, well by by virtue of this property, we know that it has either a blue monochromatic subgraph of size T or a red monochromatic subgraph of size S minus 1. Okay, so just to keep this straight, red S minus 1 or blue T. Okay, now we're trying to show that, you know, RST, you know, is finite, and in particular RST is less than or equal to this capital N. So that means that if we can, if, if a, blue subgra a blue monochromatic subgraph on T of these vertices exists, well then we've satisfied this condition here, and we're finished. So if this condition is true, then we're finished. So let's consider this condition. What if, it, what if this condition holds instead? That means that on S minus one of these vertices, so maybe you know, these are part of S minus one, you know, we have a complete monochromatic subgraph that is red on S minus one of these. So, you know, you'd have something like this. And now what we want is to actually show that in this entire, you know, complete graph on N vertices, that an S, not an S minus one, but an S monochromatic subgraph red exists. Well, how do we get from this S minus one a uh, monochromatic subgraph to this S. Well, we simply connect all these vertices to V via a red edge, and we're finished. Now, why is that? Well, remember how we defined our set A. Our set A is the, is the vertices adjacent to V via a red edge. And so, because we already have uh, a, a red monochromatic subgraph on S minus one of these down here, as soon as we connect them to V, we automatically have a red uh, monochromatic subgraph on S of the vertices. And hence we've satisfied this property here. And so we have shown that one of these properties must hold so long as RST, is, uh, uh, yeah, we've shown that one of these properties must hold on a finite number of vertices, and uh, so that completes the proof.